Bill's out there getting ready to start the fire for some biscuits. We didn't need a fire this morning. It's 65 out. We've been getting about 50 degrees in the morning. It's a lot warmer. So he decided to go ahead and cook out. And I can't wait. I've been wanting some biscuits for quite a while. He gets that fire going. I'll go out there and sit around the fire. But we were thinking about uh, talking about when we used to ride up in the mountains called Three Rivers. It's not too far from here. And uh, it takes a while to ride that trail. But it was fun when we was younger. It'd be harder now. And the trail has a lot of rocks on the path. Bill's in there uh, making the biscuits. Bill went and got him some coffee. Well, it's a good morning. The wind is low. There he is. Feels pretty good out. Hey, Bill. There's Bill. Come on. There you go. No, you can't sit with me. <laughs> you got you got the sitting lap. <clears throat> No, okay. what a baby. Okay. Sonny loves his morning play and hugs with Bill. Yeah. It's going to get the bottom hot over there. It's going to smell like cooked pig. Uh, we was going to talk this morning about a place where we used to, uh, we have went in the past several times and rode up a, into the higher mountains. Uh, you go from about 4,500 feet to about 5,000 feet or more. No, you go uh, 10,000 feet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. thinking. Yeah, uh, I was we got up, we've, we've got up as high as 10,000 feet. But anyway, uh, it's north of here, and uh, you can find it on uh, Google or uh, I guess a lot of stuff. But, it's called uh, Three Rivers Campground, right at the foot of the big mountains to the north and east of us. And uh, the road into it from the highway, yeah, I think it's about 10, 15 miles in, so it's a ways in, but it's uh, if you're traveling through this part of the country with horses uh, on a trip or delivering horses or whatever, it's a real good place to stop for a, a day or so if you want. Uh, at the campground itself, there is corrals and uh, there's water nearby. There's a stream that's coming out of the mountains. It's usually always running pretty good. Uh, you go across a big ranch called Three Rivers Ranch, but uh, the road is public. And uh, nowadays, I think they even have a campground host. Uh, used to, you did, they didn't. It was uh, just a parking lot in the corrals and then the trailhead and you headed on up into the mountains. Uh, we hadn't been there in some time. We don't have any digital pictures of it, but uh, we do have probably some regular pictures from a regular camera of it. Uh, she'll, she'll probably put them up with this. Yeah, I can look and see what's in my files. And yeah. See if uh, I find anything. We went up in there several times, and it's pretty steep going up. You, you, you know, if you're, uh, if you decide to go up, you go into a wilderness area where there's, uh, you can only go in on foot or on horseback. It's called White Mountain Wilderness, is what it's called. And uh, you gain uh, from the parking lot to the where you really quit climbing somewhat, you gain about, uh, I guess, 5,000 feet in elevation. Uh, that's about as high as we've ever went up, about 10,000 feet. Uh, there's uh, plenty of water most of the way up. And then at the, at the, uh, when you get near the top, you get in more like an alpine area. There's less trees, 
There's still trees, but there's less, and there's a lot of grass. We had to cross oh. the creek several times, yeah, too. Yeah, you have to cross the creek, but it's it's a shallow creek. You can step across it in lots of places. Uh, and it's about always running. Uh, there's a petroglyph site before you get to that that a lot of people go to. It's uh, where there's a lot of old uh, 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 Indian peckings where they made designs in the rocks. I think there's thousands of yeah, them drawings. Thousands of them, and a lot of people stop there. But uh, to get to the campground, you got to go in farther into the mountains, and, and it's a good layover if you're traveling with horses. Uh, when you get just about out of the forest up towards the top and you get into the more like what I call an alpine area, it's mostly grass, there is scattered pine trees, you start uh, switchbacks, getting up. It's the last uh, part that's real steep, so it's it's just switchback back and forth uh, for the last uh, probably 500 feet or so, maybe more. You come up to a saddle called Elk Ridge and it's all grassy. There's there's higher mountains above that. Uh, we were there several years ago, and it's a uh, just up and back. We usually go up three rivers and then cross over a little ways and come back down a, a canyon called Dry Canyon. And there's no not hardly any water at all in Dry Canyon. Uh, but there's a lot of water in Three Rivers Canyon. You can just backtrack back down Three Rivers Canyon too if you want. Yeah, but Dry Canyon got washed out. Well, a lot of it did uh, back in 2008, I think. There was a, a hurricane come up, or the remnants of a hurricane came up the Rio Grande, and it turned and went right over that area and uh, washed a lot of the trail out. But they, uh, they've had it fixed since then, and then uh, a few years ago they had a bad fire and uh, I don't think in that Three Rivers Canyon, but in, in other areas up there above it and around it, there was uh, some burning. But anyway, when we went up, uh, we've never really went up and spent the night. And it's close to home. And uh, we got up on top, and then we started circling around the, the side of a mountain, and uh, the trail... It's about that wide, and the, the mountain goes up like that and down. Oh, like it's that. scary! It's just cut into the side. It's a game trail, that, yeah. Uh, and uh, the Forest Service probably maintains it. Uh, and it's all grass. It's about belly high on a horse. It looks like if you uh, had a piece of cardboard, you could slide oh, down yeah. ten thousand yeah. feet, yeah. just straight yeah, we down. We used to do that when we was kids. Uh -huh. uh, go to uh, overpass that wasn't too far from. Uh, where we live, some of us boys, and we'd go by motels and station gas stations and, and try to get cardboard boxes and take the cardboard and slide down those grassy embankments on an overpass and stuff. But anyway, on the Three Rivers Trail, as you're going around where we usually like to stop and eat lunch, there's a, a spring there called Bonita Seat. And what it does, it turns into a, a mountain stream. It's a spring bubbling up out of the ground. And it feeds that stream all the way down to a, a lake called Bonita Lake. And it's uh, it's a reservoir. Uh, it's a good sized lake for this part of the country. But it uh, feeds uh, water to a, a town south of here, way south of here. But anyway, we, we were going around towards that and we were gonna stop there because uh, it's in a, a, a meadow and the horses, uh, you just turn them loose. Well, they're tired by that time anyway. Well, you know, we went up there one time, and that grass was so tall, I was sitting on my horse, and that grass come up to my knees. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was, uh, it, and, a lot, it, it's, uh... And they didn't even have to bend their head down no, and eat grass. You know, they'll stay there for a long time grazing. But anyway, we were going around, we were heading around to it, around the side of a mountain that was just grass and, and the trail going through it. And uh, way to the east of there, there's a, oh, an area where there's outfitters and they take uh, tourists on rides and back in that wilderness area. Well, we came around the side of a mountain. We hadn't seen anybody all day and uh, our, our horses got jumpy, but 
your come up. I think it was about five or six tourists on mules yeah. and, a, and a guide. Yeah. And uh, I don't small know. mules. Small mules. Yeah, they were they're small mules. They're not like them big Missouri mules. They're more like 14 hands. 13, 14 hands. Just but, above the donkeys. Yeah, they're just above the donkeys, but they will carry a heavy load. And they're good for that kind of stuff. And uh, my horse just went crazy. I was on a big oh old. Oh my gosh, it was so scary. Long legged gill in it. It was. He big, never, he's he on never big fell, red. but he started bucking. And we went up a little ways, and then we go down a little ways, and I was trying to get him under control. And uh, finally, I got him back on the trail, and he stopped. And those tourists looked like they were going to die of fright. They just. They Their just, eyes got big. <laughs> Hey, buddy. I'm scared too. I know. <laughs> and my horse, little red, he just froze. I couldn't yeah, he get. Just froze, but anyway, him. I, I got mine stopped, and uh, the outfitter he come on, he stopped everybody. You know, he stopped those mules. He was in front, and after he seen I got him under control, he come, and those mules come at me, and then they just stepped around me on the high side. Every one of them, and the tourists, uh, they're probably still talking about that. They, because it was steep, it was real steep. Real steep. Uh, I don't know how my horse kept his feet. I know, I thought he was going to fall over. Uh, anyway, they, they were heading back to the to the settlement where the outfitter lived. And uh, we went on about our way and we went down to, uh, and then he started dropping down a little bit into a meadow and that's where the Bonita Seep is at. Or Bonita Spring, if you want to call it that. Uh, and we stopped there for, for lunch and uh, a nice stream. Uh, it's been less in recent years. There's been an ongoing drought. And I don't know what it is now because we've, we've had a couple of pretty good winters. Yeah. And, uh, so it might be going again. But uh, we go across that meta from the uh, Benita's seat and then get back, climb back up into the mountains a little bit. It's kind of like a valley in between mountains where that seat is at and uh, go back down another canyon. Uh, it's uh, it's a real nice area. Uh, there's a lot of elk in there. There's a lot of bears in that area too, but we've never had any any problem. Uh, I think that was about a nine hour trip. Yeah, it, it takes around. about nine hours. Just to, and it's only about three or four, three or four miles. Well, maybe four, a little bit over four miles up and down. And, uh, but it, it's uh, slow going because when you're going up, it's it's steep. And well, we had just took the saddles off the horses and just uh, rest them in between, you know, yeah. cool them off. Yeah, it's it's a it's a steep trail. And what's pretty, uh, there's meadows coming up when you're riding up that trail, and they had real pretty yellow flowers mm -hmm. and squirrels were chirping. You could see butterflies. It was real pretty in different spots. Yeah. Real pretty. You do get up uh, eventually, <clears throat> if you go up high enough, you'll get up to places where you can see back out across to the west of the basin and you see the white sands. And it's, it's way far away, but you can see it from spots up there. But it, it's, a, it's a good place to stop. Uh, there's uh, several campsites. You probably have to pay now. I don't know. The, the, the times we used to go up there, we rarely seen it. We'd see a hunter once in a while in the fall. That, of the year. that Three Rivers Trail, going east after you cross the mountains, it goes. Uh, the trail goes uh, in the vicinity of uh, the old town of Lincoln, New Mexico, which is far east of that, and then on into uh, eastern New Mexico by uh, the Pecos River, and on into West Texas and. Uh, what that was uh, known for back in the 1800s, uh, people like Billy the Kid traveled that trail a lot, but they would go over to uh, in uh, eastern New Mexico and, and maybe uh, west Texas, but in New, uh, New Mexico and uh, steal cattle and bring them across the mountains and back down that, uh, that trail and then sell them to ranchers in this part of the country. Uh, there was a, a rancher that had that Three Rivers Ranch at one time. I can't remember his name, but anyway, he, he was told, uh, it was said that uh, he would buy the, 
cattle off those. Uh, yeah, they bring them down that same trail that we rode. Yeah. Well, and, uh, it had water in it anyway. And it was easy to bring them down because it was downhill and uh, they couldn't go to the side because there was no, uh, there might have been one or two branch canyons going off of it, but mostly they just want, the cows would just come down on their own and just, they'd just stay behind them. Well, they're probably going to stay by the water anyway. And, and there was uh, water all the way down to the, where the campground is now. And from the campground, then you go out into the grassy areas and, and the basin. But they would... Uh, Run the cattle through there quite quite a bit. Uh, we we liked it because it was uh, the scenery is is pretty is uh, strenuous on the horses getting up all the way up in there. We hiked it one time and uh, it was a long hike. We hiked it for this before we had horses. Uh, yeah, we we hadn't bought any more horses. We when we moved out here, we didn't have any horses. Uh, we hadn't had any horses for a while, and, and with all this open country, that's the thing to do is have horses, if, if you can. Uh, well, we went up there about, it took us five hours, we did a five hour uh, hike, so it was getting evening, so we thought, well, we better get down out here, go on home, yeah. and uh, what happened, uh, we got down to the creek, close to the campground and then there was a family and they had kids on their horses and I was so tired and I seen them uh, stepping across that creek and it was like oh my gosh we're gonna have to get horses <laughs> and everybody looked real happy on their horses and I thought well after that we did some thinking yeah yeah it wasn't long after that that we went ahead and bought two horses uh, We'd had horses before, but when we moved out here, we we had we sold motorcycles. We had we didn't want to bring the motorcycles out here, and we had some dirt bikes. We got rid of them, and we didn't have the horses anymore. And we really wasn't thinking about horses when we moved out here. I don't know why. There's so much country to see. There he is. And uh, you can't. You it's just hard to see it on foot. You can do it if you're young enough on foot, but uh, horses are a lot better. Oh, you see tons of yeah. stuff on horse. Yeah, but uh, uh, that, that Three Rivers, uh, there's a lot of pictures of it online probably. I, I had never looked. Uh, a lot of information about it. It's actually, it's not on uh, wilderness. It's right on the boundary. It's on National Forest land. And uh, a lot of pine trees. There's a lot of shade in there. Some of that we passed through was like dark woods, yeah. like Hansel and Gretel, and really yeah. made you feel uh, like, oh, yeah. this is neat. Yeah, it, uh, it didn't look like any of it had ever been logged in that canyon. It, it's probably just too steep, to, yeah. uh, not worth the effort back a long time ago. And, and uh, uh, it, the trees, a lot of the trees was pretty good size. A lot of hunters use that trail now to, get, to gain access, but you can't take a four-wheeler up it. And uh, some of them had bluffs that we went by, you looked up and by keep an eye, make sure no mountain lion was up there. Yeah, we never seen any up in there, uh, but... I'm sure there was. And you know, at that time, we uh, we hardly took dogs with us, I don't think. Yeah, I had a, a little poodle. poodle on my backpack. <laughs> Her name was Holly. <laughs> she would go so many places with us, just looking off that backpack. <laughs> on the back of a horse. Yeah, on the back of a horse. She just loved to go. That was fun. Yeah. But anyway, that's the story about the three rivers. Anybody traveling through this part of the country with horses, or you know, if you're just traveling through with a motorhome, it, it's a good ways off the highway. Uh, the road is pretty good going in there. It's just a great gravel dirt road, and you do cross the you do cross that stream one time as it comes out into the basin, but it's it's not ever very deep. You know, you can cross it. Yeah. It's a low water crossing. And uh, well, I mean, if you're a hiker, you would like it. Yeah, it, it'd be perfect for hikers. It's uh, especially because of the water. Yeah. Once you get when you get up there pretty high, you can get away from the water, and uh, you won't get any running it any again until you go over and back, head back down 
going east, you'll run into uh, springs and streams that head towards that. There's a lake east of there they're called Bonita Lake. And uh, a lot of people will fish in that lake. And a lot of people camp around it. There's campgrounds around here, but that's, that's quite a ways from there. But, uh, One time we was going up that uh, creek and there was a hollow log and the bark was all peeled off of it and it was just perfect for an Indian drum. I thought it was about six foot long, I think. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I wish I could have that. It was such a neat log, all cleaned out and everything. Nice yeah. hollow in it. Well, in the winter, we went up one time there. I think it was in October, wasn't it? When all that snow was yeah, there? Yeah, we ran into snow right before we hit the switchbacks. And the snow was, it was too deep for the horses. I think it was already three or four foot deep. Well, we lost the trail. And we couldn't find the trail. But it was getting too deep for the horses. Uh, they, they just can't. If if there's not a trail broke through there, they can't get through that snow. Uh, and we had to turn around. But and we that were, that creek was icy. When they step yeah, on it, it go crunch and yeah, break. It was, they were good about it. It was warm down here. Yeah. And uh, but we got up pretty high up, and it it was uh, getting cold. But they do have some good storms up there. Somebody's getting my kidlings. Yeah. But anyway, that's the story of Three Rivers. Yeah, yeah I fucking find any pictures on all Puma. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, we should have some. We just, uh, that was way before digital cam camera for us. Yeah. Anyway, that was, uh, and we hadn't been up in a while. Uh, if we go when, in recent years, if we go, we we would tend to go west over in western New Mexico. Yeah, that's new territory for us. It's, well, there's less people. Yeah. And uh, new country to see, and uh, you you probably couldn't see it in a lifetime. Uh, yeah, and they got river west called the Gila River. river. Oh gosh. And that's a nice river on lots of water, wide. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people rode the trails around there. Yeah, there are several trails in the Gila Wilderness. We're just too far to do it. Yeah. You know? Well, it's for us, it's about <clears throat> a five-hour drive, but uh, it's getting a lot of traffic now. Yeah. Because it's popular. It's uh, <clears throat> the oldest wilderness in the lower United States. I think it's the first one. I think it was designated back in 1905, I believe. I might be wrong. And it's a big one. It's about 500,000 acres. So. And, and they had people trying to live wild out there. Yeah, they, uh, the Fish and Game or Forest Service usually tries to get them out of there. Is they, they're poaching, is what they say. Is, you know, they're poaching, but they're living out there. and Just want to be free. Yeah, but uh, that's against the law. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat the animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, they, they, several years ago, they, there was a guy back in there somewhere, and they finally uh, caught him. But he had lived back in that wilderness area for a long time and just kind of stayed away from people. Oh, and, there's a yellow cat over there. By the fence. Oh, okay. yeah. Maybe he'll get some money. Yeah, he's just walking down the, by the fence. Yeah. I think Gus is going after him. Gus is upset. There he goes. That's an intruder. Yeah. But anyway, this guy, uh, he actually took a small family, a woman with some kids. And, you know, they joined him in there, but that's just, that's rough life for uh, little kids. It's cold. Uh, it's all wild game that they, they eat. But this this guy, he he managed in there for I think a couple of years, off and on. And they finally uh, arrested him. Oh, Ben! Ben sees the in, cat in jail or prison over in Arizona somewhere in a federal prison. Uh, and finally he got out. 
How terrible is that? Living free in the woods, end up being in prison, <laughs> locked up. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey. They don't fuck that cat around. No. But anyway, that's that's uh, another wilderness area that's uh, real popular. There's a lot of water over there. Yeah. If we had the money, we'd probably move over there. Because it's uh, so much to see, uh, less people. Yeah. The only problem, they got a ton of wolves over there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Belle. Yeah, that's uh, where they've been uh, reintroducing wolves. Uh, it's a Mexican gray wolf is what it is. It's not like a timber wolf up in Alaska or Canada. They're, they're not as big. They're still good size, but they're not as big as those. And, uh, I just read an article not too long ago that they're really having problems with depredation. Uh, and uh, the state is, I think, is getting involved because the state's losing tax money because the outfitters and the ranchers are selling out. Well, they're eating up their cows, uh, eating up the uh, deer. And they're, they're, it's getting to be a problem. I don't know what they're going to do about it because, you know, it's. I, I understand that. It's nice hearing that, hearing them howling in the wilderness. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, to hear it uh, like wild country, but then you've got people pay, paying taxes, and it's, that's that's probably the reason the state got in, because they're losing revenue. Uh, they are, uh, or they were at one time, they were... Uh, Knocking the elk herds down a little bit. Uh, a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, Ben. Anyway, we thought about that. You know, have to deal with the wolves over there, especially with dogs, because they do get dogs. They get uh, come up to houses and stuff. Yeah, there's one little town over there, and uh, they on the school playground. It's a real small community. But on the school playground, they have to, the deputy sheriffs have to go out every once in a while because the wolves will come up real close to those kids on the playground. Yeah. And wolves do not stay in wild places. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> they, they, don't. Uh, they go where the easiest thing yeah. is. And I don't blame them. I, don't, I understand that. I, I would too. Uh, okay. Just, you know, well, that's I don't our... know how they're going to straighten it out. That's uh, our concern. Uh, so I many wolves over there. It's a wolf dumping ground. Yeah, but it, uh, they probably do help the environment because wolves will kill coyotes in a second. They don't get along. Yeah, with but they're wiping everything out. Yeah, yeah. They, the ranchers are having a big problem over there. Oh, what was that? Oh, there's uh, I think the. Flycatchers a while ago going after a hawk. Oh, did you? Yeah, there, there's one of them. Uh, well, it's actually a falcon, I think, that went by. And the flycatchers are attacking him. I just love having them flycatchers here. I gotta check my biscuits. I can smell them. They smell so good. Walking too much. No, I gotta cook. Honey, come on. Go. I might have to go get the, the bacon. What? I'll go get the bacon ready. Yeah. See what they look like. It don't yeah. ever hurt. It don't hurt to get a little ashes in your biscuits. That, oh yeah. That's <laughs> minerals. Yeah, minerals. Yeah. Now they're puffed up, but they're, they're still need to cook. I need to put some more coals on them. Well, Sonny's gonna have to learn not lay by the wood heater. I don't know if he wants to be by Bill or by the biscuits. I'm sure he's going to get hot pretty soon. Oh, his ear's twitching. Sonny, come on, you're going to get hot. Let's go. Sonny. Come on, get, come on. Sonny, up, come up, up. Go Sonny. on. Come here. Go on. Yeah, his ear's getting hot. Yeah. There you go. Well, the, the biscuits and bacon smell so good. Maybe that's why he wants to be around the bacon and biscuits. Yeah. He needs to boost that fire up, so get some twigs, get it going. Uh, 
There's the dead branch over there. Yeah, it's going good now. Get that bacon cooked. Looks like the fire did the trick. We really got the bacon cooked. Mmm, smells so good. Bill's taking that in. Yeah, it's hot. Uh, so I can go make gravy. I appreciate everybody watching from Out West Homestead. Bye. Now everybody's going to go with the bacon. And Sonny knows about bacon grease.